I really just want to show off the ExcelNet panel macro drive, the BML, because it's new and it's really small. It's two inches high by 3.41 by 5.08 inches. So it's not very big. Um, it can do 15 amps continuous 30 peak, runs off of typically 75, 24, 48. 75 volts. Um, it's pretty good for 100 volt motors. Um, I'm going to try to make it interesting by showing how to sh hook it up to the Panasonic A format, um, incremental A format feedback device. It's a Minus A5 motor. Uh, and of course, you know, you can read the I.O. and the analog input over the macro. And there's even a secondary encoder port for, say, a passive encoder. Uh, you maybe could grab the secondary position in the auxiliary data. I'm going to show you how to set up for macro, but I'm not going to teach a macro lesson here. So the macro drive has two addresses. It has the master address and the slave address. I've set the master address to 1 and the slave to zero. Zero is a valid slave address. The fiber optic connection is here uh, for networking. There's a amp status, LED, a network status. I have the stow hooked up, safe torque off bypass at the moment. Serial port RS-232 with the B&B &B electronics USB to serial adapter, the SER-CK cable kit. Um, as you can see, I've got earth connected to the drive. There's a convenient location. The screw and nut already available for earth. I've connected the motor frame to, to the same earth. This green and yellow wire runs back to the earth connection. I'm running off a 75 volt power supply today. I've got the motor powers hooked up, UVW, white, black, red. I've got the uh, power hooked up, 75 volts, and the feedback, which is only four or five wires with a shield. This is the Panasonic Minus A motor. It's a 200 volt motor. You should probably use a 100 volt motor if you want to get full speed, but we should probably be able to get about 1,500 out of this with no problem. And I've got a brake wire connected so that I can actually turn the shaft without. Uh, connecting the brake to the drive, but the drive the drive does have a brake output that we can use with the auxiliary 24 to power the brake and turn it on at the right time. But for the moment, I'm just bypassing that. So I decoded the Panasonic Minise MSME 042G1V motor, and you can see it's a low inertia, uh, uh, 50 to 5 kilowatt range. This is a 400 watt motor rated for 200 volts. They do make 100 volt windings. It's got the incremental serial with about a million counts per rev. It has the brake and it's an IP67. We can see further in the manual for the motor there is some motor spec information. Uh, they didn't show the pole count but they got the rated in peak torque. They got the rated current in RMS. 1.414 times that is the continuous current. I can get the torque constant, newton meters, divided by amps is the torque constant, and from that I can get the back EMF constant. The normal rotation speed is 3,000, the max theoretical is 6,000, and I've got the inertia 10E minus 4 kilogram meters squared, so 0.28 uh, centimeters squared. And 20-bit incremental, 1 million counts, the incremental actually comes with halls, 24-volt brake, engagement time 50 milliseconds for the brake. So the Copley driver takes S and S naught for bidirectional data and outputs plus 5 and ground. We connect this to the feedback device. The feedback device has plus 5 and ground, white black wire, and the light blue and purple. So data and hat data or S and hat S. So from CME2 we're going to use the basic setup here. It's a brushless rotary motor with a Panasonic incremental A format, which comes with digital hall type. 
primary, so the data uh, produces incremental information and haul information, so we get that for free. Uh, there's an option for a load feedback device. You could do an incremental passive if you wanted. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, you normally, in a macro, you want the current mode software programmed, but I'm going to test out the mechanical system, make sure I can move the motor, and then we'll come back and set it to a current mode. Sinusoidal commutation, multi-mode port, we can emulate out, or we can leave it alone and use it as the secondary encoder if you want. And we'll look at the data for the motor. Uh, most of this came from calculation and spec sheet. The number of poles I got by rotating the electrical cycles, I rotated the current vector five times and did one rev at the motor, so that's a 10-pole motor. Uh, the resistance I measured with my own meter, 3.7 ohms, and I basically doubled it to have a guess at the inductance. We're going to tune the current loop, so it doesn't matter what we put in there really, but it's a good guess. Um, the feedback device, 20 bits, this is uh, 2, to the, 2 to the 20 counts per rev. There's no battery with an incremental encoder. That's for an absolute encoder. Uh, brake stop. This is cool because there is a brake. So you want to come to a stop before you turn the brake on. And uh, even before you cut the stow, you want to stop the motor. Uh, calculating initial tuning parameters worked out pretty good. I've got a current loop bandwidth that seems a little bit low, but we can crank it up um, with the CME2 scope. 500 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. We got a five pole motor, so we, we probably should get about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth, so we'll crank that up a little bit. On the V loop screen, I gave it a little faster than the rated for the velocity limit, and we'll check out the gains from the math model given the inertia. Uh, the position loop gains look pretty good. Tracking window's kind of high, but it's a million counts per rev, so we can change that later. So, I guess before. I do the tuning. We should take a look at the manual phasing. Um, again, the control section, you can enable a current vector. of This is 10% of the rated current. And we can set the zero position to start at zero. And we can rotate the motor shaft with the current vector. Right now it's pointed that way. So if I rotate the current vector five times, what I should see at the motor shaft is one full rev at the motor shaft and you can see the hall indicator is slightly leading in the forward it should also slightly lead in the negative direction and this is about five turns so that's one rev of the motor at the motor shaft and I got about a million counts per rev and my hall decode looks good um, if you had the wrong hall wiring it just wouldn't look right. So, you know, you pick the wiring to get it to go the right direction. And if you got a lead or a lag, you can compensate that with the, the hall offset. So this is 180 degrees out of, out of phase here. Uh, you can also change the count direction to make counts go up when you go forward. Counts must go up when you go forward. And you can change the motor direction if you want to go the other way, but if you change the motor direction, then you'll have to change the count direction. So they go hand in hand. So I boosted the current loop gain a little bit. That looks pretty good, but I want to show you the velocity loop tuning. So apply to the velocity loop auto setup checkbox, velocity parameters tab. Let's uh, cool off the acceleration a little bit. 900 seems a little high. We're going to bang it back and forth 5 hertz, 330 RPM and we'll see what we get for uh, actual motor velocity. So when the gains are too high, you get oscillations. There we go. Cut it in half. And the integral term, we can uh, crank up the integral. Probably get a little integral wind up on that. Um, so the integral will get us to the steady state. That looks pretty good. We'll stop there. So profile tab, trajectory move, 1,400 RPM. Seems a little fast for 75 volts, but it seems to be doing it. Actual current following error. I get a little bump up here after the end of the move. I think the integral is too high, so I'm going to 
knock that back down a little bit, see if we can get to steady state a little better. So accelerate, run at velocity, decelerate, stop, following error, plus or minus a few counts. So I turn the integral down a little bit to get to steady state much smoother. So we've tested the mechanical system, we've made some moves, we like it a lot, now it's time to set it up for macro. So on the basic setup, we'll leave it in a current mode. Macro likes current mode, so we'll leave that alone. Uh, we've got a tuned current loop, gives us about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. Um, the program current is something we could test here, but from the amplifier network configuration screen, we can see that we were prepared for the macro master to come in. So the master address was set to 1 with a switch. The slave address here is set to 0, but there's other positions you could put it in. Um, the scaling input command is 6 amps. Uh, there's a heartbeat for uh, timeout to make sure things are connected. Um, there's some home status bits that we can look at. And there's some auxiliary data registers. You can use the secondary analog input or just the digital input. And the motor encoder, position encoder, so if you had a second encoder, it could come in here. There's the ability to set the, uh, the macro sync. You could change the frequency. Just be careful when you change the frequency. You'll have to retune the current loop again. Um, enable position, output scaling. Maybe we need that for this really big encoder. Active network required for AMP to enable. That's just a nice feature. It lets the, the master come in and configure it. So, on the Copley web page, there is uh, communication protocols on the download page, and we can see the macro guide. Um, there's some step-by-steps -steps in here about setting the switches, configuring with CME2, a lot like what we've done already. Um, there's details about the interface between the, the master and the slave. So there's a little bit of spec information here. Uh, this points to the macro uh, PMAC documents, the I parameters. So there's some that are popular in this guide, and then we can refer to the PMAC guide for, for greater detail. Uh, but what I thought was cool was the command and status register. So the control status register is 16 bits. Um, there's uh, auxiliary data ports for the I.O., and you know, like a secondary encoder could even be used. Uh, the command register, so the PMAC commands current of the drive, and the drive uh, returns the position. So the loop is closed on the PMAC, the position and velocity loop, and the copy just controls the current loop and commutates. Okay, I also wanted to mention that uh, there are some Copley distributors that distribute both the Delta Tau and the Copley macro drives. Uh, one, one of the local experts at Macro and Copley here in Massachusetts and throughout New England is Axis New England. Um, they're located in Danvers, Mass, and there's a bunch of guys up there that I refer to uh, when I have macro questions, and they're, they're very helpful. Um, also, uh, APC automation and process controls in the Chicago area, um, they're, they're wider than that. They're kind of the Midwest. Uh, they're, they're also uh, very proficient at the Delta Tau uh, PMAC, uh, the macro uh, configuration. And uh, I know Dave here has some, some friends and buddies that, you know, they may do some, some work with the uh, Delta Tau. Um, there's, uh, Europe has some uh, Delta Tau. Um, the uh, Delta Tau guys in Europe uh, have been working with us, and they're real friendly. And, of course, the main headquarters um, for Delta Tau in California, there's a bunch of good guys there, too. I, I know they've integrated with Omron, but uh, I still see new new products coming out. You know, besides the macro, they can they can do the EtherCAT. But I tell you, once once you get a macro installed up and running, you you just want a bunch of macro drives after that. Okay, thanks for your time and good luck with the macro.